What is making you a quitter? What is making you a weak man? What is making you afraid? That's why I kept on quitting and going back to start or not knowing how to get through hard times. And that's why I always tell people, I'm not a theorist. I didn't study, like, I didn't study a book. I literally put myself in a fire repeatedly like a sword. You put a sword in a fire repeatedly and repeatedly. If, if you keep on doing that, you're going to get a nice sword. And then you keep on beating it. And that's what I am. We can't quit. We got to figure out what is wrong with you? What's going on here? So I kept on putting the sword back in the daggone fire and I just beat it harder. And I beat it harder. And I beat it harder. Before I knew it, I started realizing, hmm, all right, man. The brain is starting to get hard. The brain is starting to get hard. I'm no longer a theorist. I'm now a practitioner. I put it in hell. I dissected it while it's in hell because you can't dissect anything in a normal environment. You can't dissect anything in 72 degree weather. Dissect it when it's miserable. Dissect the brain when all it's thinking about is I need to get out of here, man. Open the door. And he said, nah, five more seconds, man. Five more seconds in the freezer. And that's when you start to pick that brain apart. And that's what all this stuff did to me. I kept on putting myself back into the freezer or the fire and I beat it harder out of myself, mentally and physically. Before I knew it, this is what happened. You may get some results from it, but they're not permanent. The permanent result comes from you. You have to suffer. You have to make that a tattoo on your brain so when that hard time comes again, you don't forget it. As you're trying to fix yourself and dig yourself out of this deep hole that life, society, and you helped, you helped also. Those people who you saw down there in that hole who were there with you, who are your friends and people who you counted on, you meet the people in the same situation that you're in in life. Those people become your friends. And the second you try to get out of that situation and become better, those people are in that, in that grave, in that dungeon, just yanking at your heels, man, saying, get the back, oh no, get, no, come on back here. So I get that all the time now. People would constantly remind me of who I used to be back in the day. I messed up here, I messed up here, I messed up everywhere. And so I realized the worst thing that happened to me is I lost myself. I never had myself, I never found myself. I had no self-esteem. So I knew through working out and through learning, cause I, it, it took a lot for me to learn also. I started finding self-esteem. Once I found that, that's when doors started opening up. I, started, I stopped caring about people, that what they thought, being judged, wow, if I say this, if I started right now, are you gonna make fun of me? I stopped caring about that. And that's when my life started really changing for me, slowly but surely. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you wanna go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you gotta break yourself off. The amount of mental pain, of how many times you're gonna have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. There's gonna be more times you do something that, that you don't wanna do than you are gonna to wanna to do it. That's your new norm. So then it's like breathing. And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't wanna live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So I want you to go there with me. You want to learn from me? Let me take your ass home. Let me take you there. That's the whole thing about it, man. We're scared to dive into our lives. What made us who we are? The beautiful people that we are. We're all jacked up in so many ways. That's the beauty of us. That's the beauty of me. I'm jacked up. But I figured out my own little process on how to get unjacked up. You know, I'm not going to get the same way you're going to get there. You may get there by going point A to point B. I might go point C to D to E to F, but I'm gonna be there the same way you are, just a little harder. That's how I train my brain. So it's just different. I'm a different thinker. Like my mindset's very different than most people. I don't wanna be known too much. I don't want too many looky-loos in my life because that's where I gained my strength. I gained my strength from a place of quiet. And the more I got my story out there, the more I realized it no longer be David Goggins, the quiet man. It'd be David Goggins, the guy that's on Instagram answering this, answering that, because I'm also a guy that's always about, if someone reaches out to me, I'm not going to sit back and say, oh, you know, whatever. I'm going to reach back to you. So it's going to take time yeah. out of me trying to gain strength and me trying to get ready to go. But then I realized that I have a very 
God put me in a very interesting spot of life where he made hell, he made hell my teacher. And a lot of people don't understand that. I'm trying to give people a different thought process of life. It's these few moments in life that you have. Like for me, I always talk about it. And I believe that we're all, we're all teachers. We're all teachers. And if you don't learn something and give back like what you learn, what's the point of living? And you're wasting. Yeah, you're wasting. You, you have all this knowledge of what you learn. Some people may think you're crazy. Some people may, you know, may put a title on you. A few people who are like, you know what, I need to hear that. So you have to put yourself out there. What separates me from a lot of people is they go into an, a daunting task and the task is overwhelming. Like when I heard the pull-up record was 4,020 pull-ups and I was talking about breaking this record. People are like, oh my God. I went right to a pen and paper. They go, what are you doing? I'm doing the math, man. What are you talking about? I'm open-minded to the fact that, okay, if I do five pull-ups in a minute for so many hours, I can get so many pull-ups in. How much time do I have to rest? I was breaking the math down. You have to be open-minded to the possibilities that I can do this. Once you shut your mind down to the possibility that it can be achieved, there's no way it can happen. I have all these valuable lessons, because if you look out in the world right now today, it's not a nice place, but I'm very prepared for it. I'm prepared for all the failure coming my way. I'm prepared for everything my way, by never saying it's going to be okay. Life sucks. But I start up down the road of, instead of the path of, you know, least resistance, I started choosing the path of most resistance to prepare myself for the journey that was coming my way. With success in life comes more haters. Don't make them hurt your feelings. Use them for fuel. Use them for energy. That person who said you couldn't do something fast enough, good enough, smart enough. Use them for energy. Instead of killing them with kindness, torture them with success. In life, we have to continue pushing past the odds. Use everything this world has to give you for fuel. Stay hard. Tell yourself the truth. Someone calls you fat, they may be bullying you, but you might be fat. Someone calls you dumb, it's mean, but you might be dumb. It's life, man. Take it for what it's worth and change it. Like there's a quote that was said, I don't know who said it, but it was a great quote. This guy said, um, going into combat, going into war, out of the hundred men that go into war, 10 shouldn't even can be there. 80 of them are just targets. 10 do most, of, or nine do most of fighting. One is a warrior. And it's a true quote to life. I saw it going through training. I saw it everywhere I went. There's so many people who just show up to life that shouldn't even can be around. And there's few people who do all the work. I wanted to be part of that nine. And I'm working towards being that one. I walked home and sat on my couch and cried. I went to my mom's house who was about 20 minutes down the road and cried again in her couch saying, I, can't, I don't know what I'm going to do. We all have these voices in our head. We like to not listen to them. The one that comforts us and keeps us nice and warm and cuddly and gives us cookies and milk at nighttime. We like that voice. The voice, the one we want to always hear, which is why people don't like to listen to me a lot. Some people do, some people don't. The only thing that changes you is being real. I had to have the courage to go back in there because nothing was getting done. I kept on going to that nice, cuddly voice in my head saying, you know what, you don't need to do this. For the better part of 26 years, my mind was in charge of me, which is why I made all these horrible decisions. That, that's too much work, man. You've earned this. You deserve this. And that mentality got me to 297 pounds, fat, out of shape. To me, a loser. To me, making $1,000 a month and making a ton of mistakes. Because mistakes happen on the easy side of life. You take the easy road, the easy path, there's a lot of mistakes over there. The hard journey, you don't make too many mistakes over here because it's too hard. You don't want to repeat it. Challenge. Once you take control of your mind, you start making decisions for yourself versus your mind making decisions for you. We all have that, these two voices. For me, my routine is every night I stretch out. And I stretch out for two or three hours every single night without mm -hmm. fail. And while I'm stretching out, I'm thinking about my plan for the next day. I want my mind to know who's in charge. He's struggling to get up. He wants to go to the gym and start grinding. Early in the morning. It means weak, soft. Feel sorry for yourself. Get your ass up and lace them up. They hard. 
It's more important to own your weaknesses because why? You want to become a full human being. We like to run away from weaknesses. But we don't do those things that we're not good at. So for me, I realized I keep on running away from these things I'm not good at. I have to dive into these things. I have to become one with these things. And that's what happened. I literally put myself in a fire repeatedly like a sword. You put a sword in a fire repeatedly and repeatedly. If you keep on doing that, you're going to get a nice sword. I said, okay, we, we can't quit. I was 290 pounds twice in my life. I do not like to do the things I do, but there's humongous satisfaction for doing it. There's humongous satisfaction from lacing your shoes up saying, I don't really want to go for a run again. And then running. And then yeah. getting back and saying, wow, I did it. And that's what it's about. It's about these small steps to doing things you don't want to do. All right, man. The brain is starting to get hard. The brain is starting to get hard. I procrastinate every day. I don't want to do people looking like I'm some damn superhero that came down from the gods, from the heavens of earth. No, man. I don't want to do But guess what? I'm going to do it. This morning, I got up early, went for a 15 mile run. When I got back home, I got my bat to come to the gym. On the way to the gym, my neighbor sees me. He said, the question I wanted to ask you, man, for a long time, aren't you afraid of overtraining? That's it. I never thought about it. All the competition that was in front of me, and I peeled myself back. I saw the talent they had and the talent I didn't have. And I had to work up to that level. I understand about science. I know all about it. But I tell you right now, sometimes you got to bump up against science. You know, days off. A lot of people think I'm out here spraying water on myself. You don't run 200 mile races by thousands of miles pouring water on yourself. They are. There's something inside you that the brain is the most powerful thing, the mind's the most powerful thing that we have. It's not your phone, it's not the computer, it's not anything, it's your mind. And if you can tap into that, you can come from the daggone roots of hell and become such a great seed, a powerful seed that can grow into some great daggone garden. And people don't get that, it's all up here. If you're in a fight, you have to attack. You have to keep attacking. The enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever is in front of you. That's what I realized. I was never breaking the soul of anything in front of me. So that's why I came up with the thing called taking souls in my book. I started to devise ways to break a soul of a human being, of, a, of an object, of whatever's in front of me. If you keep on attacking something, nothing wants to stand in front of anything that is relentless. If you're choosing to do, if you're choosing to do something, attack it because they're going to remember you as not attacking. So I want to be remembered. You can hate me. There's one thing you can't say about me. I didn't attack it. You know how you get mentally tough? It's a lifestyle. And not making your bed, not cleaning your house. You don't hit the snooze button. You get up. You don't want to go run, you go run. You don't want to go swim, you go swim. You don't want to make your bed, you make your bed. You don't want to clean your house, you clean your house. That's how you start to callous your mind. It's not going to be fun. Do something that sucks every single day of your life. That's how you grow. If you want to be great, you want to be best ever at what you do, you can be misunderstood by everybody because you're going to be obsessed and so driven to get there. That's what it takes. It takes every second of your life. Anybody says balance? Yeah, balance is important for a lot of people. It is. But if you want to go to that edge where people do not like you, don't understand you, question everything you can do, you've arrived. I get a bunch of questions every day about how I lose 100 pounds so fast. The simple answer, stop procrastinating, stop wishing, and you gotta outwork your calories. Get after it. One thing I found out in my life, I used to always want people to accept me and like me, so I became who they were. If you like something, and I didn't like it, I liked it because you liked it. You gotta make yourself better than what you think you are. And what that requires is people not understand you, not know you, not get you at all. Look at you like you're off. Look at you like you have a problem. Don't worry about that. Be unapologetic, get after it, stay hard. The most important conversation you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it.
eventually you act on it, whether it be good or bad. There's haters everywhere in this world. People try to get in your head. The one thing you gotta understand is this, they're trying to infiltrate your mind. What a lot of boxers do to get away from distractions is they go away before a big fight. A lot of us can't do that. We have to be able to live amongst distractions and be undistracted. Stay in your own mind. Don't let them own yours. I get a lot of questions about how I stay in shape with all my travel. Here's one of my secrets. I have 10 minutes between sessions right now. So I got to my hotel room, got my room, and I'm gonna knock out some core exercises. Boy, we love to compromise our life. We love to say we don't have time. The body is truly amazing. It can handle almost anything you throw at it. It's the mind, the mind that is lacking. The mind, as I always say, is trying to find that easy way out. I think we're all an underdog. I think the top CEO on the planet Earth still has that doubt. We're all underdogs. Whether you're an underdog because you put yourself there to be hungry, or you're just a real life underdog. We're all an underdog. And one thing I know is we all have an equation. We all have an equation, like, you know, I'll talk about 3.14 is pi. There's different equations to figure out different kind of, you know, mathematical problems. We as human beings are mathematical problems. I cannot give you a book for everybody in this world. It's not like you do these five steps, you're good. No, I'm helping you figure out your equation because it's different. My equation is different from your equation. What's gonna make you tick? What's gonna make you go the distance? What's gonna make you go to that spot in hell and say, I love this spot, it's okay. Because once you figure out the equation in any math problem, you no longer fail, man, you got it figured out. I had to reinvent a human being. I sat at home for so many nights by myself, broken, broken, not just physically, mentally, spiritually, but then I sat back and said to myself, when I was fat, nasty, out of shape, miserable, and created a human being in my mind that didn't even exist, and said, that's what I want to be. I want to be that guy. I want to be a guy that's capable of doing exactly what I'm doing today. If you weren't born that guy, that mentally strong guy, he can be made. It can be made. But in making that person, you have to be able to turn down book deals. You have to be who you are every day of your life and never care about anybody who gets in your way that says you're not doing something the proper way. I was always afraid of people. Like when you get beat as bad as I did, I lied all the time. I wanted to be accepted and loved that I created about 50 people Whatever you like, I like. Just if you would be my friend, just be my friend. And that's where we get lost in life. All this stuff that you all have heard about my life growing up, it's at the surface. That's real. The journey I had to go through to get to that point. And along that journey, I figured out myself. And the biggest trophy I'll ever get in my entire life was me was really figuring out me. And when I was up on that stage, I realized that. I realized it's, it's not about money. It's not about fame. It's not about being accepted by your peers and everybody else. It's about figuring out who I am and being happy with who I am. Even though I'm gonna be judged for all these things, being able to put a middle finger up to everybody and say, this is David Goggins. And to get to that point, it felt great. We have to be able to go through our journeys in life Figure out who we are and help the person beside you. Figure out how they can do that themselves. You have to really be honest with yourself. And the one thing I was very fearful of was being honest with myself. I was the world's best liar. So you had to go back into that nasty past of your life to fix it. You have to be willing to talk about your past. I'm not saying on the platform that I'm doing it on, but I'm saying that you have to own it. 
And until you own your past and own the fact that no, a lot of your past didn't come from you. A lot of past may come from your mom, your dad. You may have a drug addiction, alcohol addiction. You may have been sexually abused, mentally abused, physically abused, whatever it comes from, bullied, whatever. It's now yours, man. No one's coming to help you. You know, no one's coming to save you. It is now yours to own. And you have to find the courage to face that. And that's why I talk so much about the past. And you have to stop being afraid of what other people think about you. Stop being afraid of being judged. Stop being afraid of what people are gonna think about you once they know who you are, know where you come from, know what you've struggled with, know, know your journey. You gotta stop, man, because I'll tell you right now, those people who are judging you, I know for a fact that every one of you out there has a past. They just do a better job of hiding it. They just don't wanna talk about it. So no matter who you're talking to, no matter who's hearing this, every one of you out there has lied. Every one of you out there is not perfect. Every one of you is, is hiding behind something. And once you come out from hiding, you can start fixing yourself. I used to look at my life from a different vantage point. And when you're in all the muck, and you're just walking in muck and walking in muck and walking in muck, you don't see that if you look off to the left of the muck, there's a sidewalk, brother. Get off of it. You have your head down looking in this muck. Once I saw the sidewalk, got the sidewalk, I got a little break. And I got a different vantage point. And then from the sidewalk, I found a cliff, then I found a mountain. I got way up high on top of my life and looked back down on it and said, okay, I gotta figure this out, man. I'm not going anywhere. I'm starting to lie, I'm starting, like, so when you have a messed up foundation, I started lying about everything. I wanted people to like me. I wanted to be accepted in some society of life, some social society. I was like, man, this isn't the right way. I messed up here, I messed up here, I messed up everywhere. And so I realized the worst thing that happened to me is I lost myself. I never had myself, I never found myself. I had no self-esteem. So I knew through working out and through learning, because it took a lot for me to learn also, I started finding self-esteem. Once I found that, that's when doors started opening up. I stopped caring about people, that what they thought, being judged. Wow, if I say this, if I started right now, are you gonna make fun of me? I stopped caring about that. And that's when my life started really changing for me, slowly but surely. Being accepted is one thing that killed me. You have to learn what do you want in your life? We have so much influence coming at us that we are so lost. We don't know what we want to do because we don't spend enough time with ourselves. You have to learn to shut off a phone, shut off a computer, shut off a TV. And it's okay to sit in a room by yourself in a chair and just think about you, where I want to be, where do I see myself tomorrow, the next year, the next year from that? And it takes a lot of self-discipline to be able to do that nowadays because you want to be so attached to everything. You want to be so caught up with the world. The world's moving too fast. The world's moving so fast that you're trying to keep up to the point where you lose yourself in the world. So you have to take that time and go to that dark place in your mind and discover who you are. You start to create a whole bunch of people that aren't even yourself. You never figure out who you are. You never live up to your dreams, your ambition. You live up to what whoever is around you that you like so much that you want to emulate and be like so much, you live their dreams. So you lose your power. The most important conversation you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it. Eventually you act on it whether it be good or bad. There's haters everywhere in this world. People trying to get in your head. The one thing you gotta understand is this, to try to infiltrate your mind. What a lot of boxers do to get away from distractions is they go away before a big fight. A lot of us can't do that. We have to be able to live amongst distractions and be undistracted. Stay in your own mind. Don't let them own yours. I am in this world alone. I'm fighting in this race by myself. No one knows the real truth about me, how hard I really go. I don't care if anybody knows. I don't want anybody to know. I'm an introvert. I live an introverted life, and I love that about me. That right there is my fuel. 
is I know that there's really no one out there grinding like me. And if they are, so be it. If I know about you, I'll make sure that up my game. That's what the mentality is all about. My whole thing is a mentality thing. The biggest thing you have to do is shut off technology. You have to go dark. What I mean by that is you have to be quiet in your mind. Get away from people. We love being around people. We love talking. We love parties. We love all that. It's okay to be alone. It's also okay to be unhappy. It's okay to be unhappy sometimes, man. So you gotta go to the truth first. Who are you? Get really accountable and say, okay, who am I? What's the truth about me? Get to that dark place in your mind. Figure out, it may take months, it may take years. Figure out your purpose. Figure out what you wanna be in life. And then from there, okay, I have my purpose. It may take a long time. No one knows their purpose because it's too loud. Find your purpose. From there, all right, you gotta start planning. People love the planning phase because it's very comfortable. And then from the planning phase, you gotta go to execution. So the execution phase would be all hate because that's where the real work begins. And that's when the failure happens and the failure and the failure. That's kind of how you have to do it. No one had any good advice for me. I was alone. But I went to the mirror and I looked at it and I said, my God, man, you are on your own. And what are you gonna do about it? That's when I slowly started to change my life. But you know, it doesn't happen that quickly. I slowly started to change when I was about uh, 17 years old. I went to a recruiter's office and the recruiter said, hey, you have to take an ASVAB test. Long story short, I failed that a few times. I had one more chance to take that test. And that's when I really developed my work ethic. The most important step we're ever taking in life is our next one. A lot of us get our feet stuck in concrete. We get our feet stuck in concrete because we're afraid to make enemies. We're afraid to speak what's on our mind. We're afraid of being in that group of people. And when you walk away, we're afraid of what they might say behind your back. All that fear clouds your brain, clouds your thinking. One thing in life, you're gonna always have haters. Embrace them. If you can walk on water, trust me, the haters are safe. You can walk on water because you can't swim. Learn one thing, shut the noise out. Embrace the fact that people don't like you. It means you're doing something right. Stay hard, stay in the fight. This applies to everything in life. Anytime you move from being normal to trying to be exceptional, People aren't going to like that. And nowadays, it's very easy to be a coward. Why? we got Instagram. Most folks don't tell you to your face. They go online. Don't let cowards get in your head. You start to create a whole bunch of people that aren't even yourself. If you don't get over that, you're doomed. You never figure out who you are. You never live up to your dreams, your ambition. You live up to what whoever is around you that you like so much that you want to emulate and be like so much, you live their dreams. So you lose your power. Being accepted is one thing that killed me. You have to learn what do you want in your life? We have so much influence coming at us that we are so lost. We don't know what we want to do because we don't spend enough time with ourselves. You have to learn to shut off a phone, shut off a computer, shut off a TV. And it's okay to sit in a room by yourself in a chair and just think about you, where I wanna be, where do I see myself tomorrow, the next year, the next year from that. And it takes a lot of self-discipline to be able to do that nowadays because you wanna be so, so attached to everything. You wanna be so caught up with the world. The world's moving too fast. The world's moving so fast that you're trying to keep up to the point where you lose yourself in the world. So you have to take that time and go to that dark place in your mind and discover who you are. Life created this person, me. Life created me to be this person that I was back in the day. And I had to realize, man, that's okay, man. It's not my fault. Now I gotta go back and fix this though. So a lot of this isn't your fault why you do some things you do, why you feel the way you feel but no one's coming back to save your ass. You have to go back to where they started, wherever that place is for everybody, and have the courage to go back there and start fixing what broke you. It's ugly. And what's funny about it is that as you're trying to fix yourself and dig yourself out of this deep hole that life, society, and you helped, you helped also, 
those people who you saw down there in that hole who were there with you, who are your friends and people who you counted on, you meet the people in the same situation that you're in in life. Those people become your friends. And the second you try to get out of that situation and become better, those people are in that grave and that dungeon just yanking at your heels. Come on back here. So I get that all the time now. People would constantly remind me of who I used to be back in the day. And they always come out of the woodworks, man. I'm fascinated with the guy Free Solo. He's another guy very similar to me. He has a passion to do something and he's in at all costs. I'm not so impressed with what he did. I'm impressed with how he shut the whole world out when he was doing it. He didn't care about, to me, this is how I see it. To be able to pull that off, you have to be willing to accept death. You have to be willing to accept you're not gonna see your loved ones anymore. You can't care about your loved ones when you're on that rock. Nothing mattered to him but that rock. Those people fascinate me. Those people who are able to put themselves in a place like that, and very few people understand that, to want something so badly. Because I don't think he believed that he was gonna die. I don't. I believe that he was willing to sacrifice everything to pull that off. Those are the people, and there's very few people like that, who are willing to say, you know what, man? You don't get me because your feet are nice and firm on the ground. That's where you want to put them. But for me, there's more to life than that. And for him, that lasted, I don't know, three, four hours. I'm not sure how long that took him. I don't know. It took him a while. It's over now. He risked everything for just a few hours on the rock. And I've done that with my own self, with my own personal life, is I've risked so much. But, but what he gained and what I've gained in these three or four hours, in these moments, are something that people will never, never know because they've never put themselves on the rock for three or four hours mm. and put everything on the rock. And that's something that very few people can understand. They think he's crazy. And those are the people I can't talk to because it's not craziness. He found something like I found something. I found this. I'm exploring this. He was exploring this. He explored it on a rock. I explored in different, in different venues. Those are the amazing people that's where I find amazing, who are willing to say, look, honey, I love you, but you have to understand something. I have to go away for a while here. I may not be with you all the time because it takes 100% focus to pull this off. I need quiet, I need dedication, I need sacrifice from myself. And I need full support because it's gonna cost everything to do this one thing that takes three or four hours, that's the dedication. And that's the dedication that does not exist in this world. Every morning I wake up, I believe in winning the battle against yourself. People say, why do you say that? Because there's a lot of things you can control. When you wake up, I talk about making your bed. Make your bed, make sure your house is clean, make sure you get your breakfast, make sure you shower, shave, whatever you're doing, control that. Don't hit the snooze button. All these things are very important. That's been told a lot of times. Why don't you hit this news button? Because you wake up already failing. So what happens when you hit this news button? You may not make your bed. You may not do your hair the way you want it. You may not pick the right clothes out in the morning time. And remember how you had a job interview for a job? We've had several of them in our lives. What did you do the night before that job, weeks before the job interview, when you knew you had it? You prepared your bowl out for your oatmeal, your cereal, whatever you had in the morning time. Your coffee cup was out. Your clothes were laid out. You studied, you rehearsed, you were ready. You brought your best self. You're going to war with yourself because you wanted that interviewer to see your best self. You won, you got the job. After a few months in that job, you look around, hmm, I got the job. You start to back off, the clothes aren't out. You're not ready, you're hitting the snooze button. You don't get up on time anymore. You realize that you can still have this job and not be your best self. The interview you is gone, your job is gone. You have your job, but the interview is gone. So winning the battle in the morning time is just that. It's that you wake up in the morning time and you own all this stuff. Because once you leave your house, the world then gets at you. And that's why I believe in not, not getting up in the morning time and checking your phone immediately. Everybody does that. They get up, the first thing they do is they grab their phone. Look at the phone. Maybe bad news on there. So how's your day start off? I don't go to the gym. I don't make my bed. I don't. You're caught up now on that phone. That's how your day starts. You lost control. So once you win that, once you win that battle in the morning time, then once you go out, now you've won. 
you go outside your house, you may lose your job, you may have a bad hit, but you won something. So you're going into battle having already won something, having already won. So then if you hit the snooze button, you go out, you're just defeated already. You're behind the power curve. Now you've won something, you feel better about yourself. So now you're able to take these hits along the way. So that's the mindset that I think it's important to bring with you every day you go, everywhere you go in life.